Welcome to a new daily top ask credit video. Today's topic. Which movie is genuinely traumatic? Threads. Wanna know what a nuclear war would look like for the average citizen? Edit, this blew up, thanks for the awards and up bodies. Anyone interested in seeing it can watch it on YouTube, currently. Definitely for mature audiences, though. This is the most terrifying movie I have ever seen. It refuses to turn away from the parts of nuclear war that every other movie glosses over. Absolutely, compellingly awful to contemplate. The parts of nuclear war that every other movie glosses over. I'm experiencing a very strange emotion whatever one would call a blend of both FOMO and fear, of participating in this trauma. The film, Johnny Got His Gun has always stuck with me as truly horrifying. The plot is that this soldier is injured in battle. When he wakes up in the hospital, he discovers that he quadruple amputee, who has also lost his eyes, ears, nose and mouth. He spends the rest of the movie, trying to communicate to someone that he wants to be euthased. I'm stuck in a nightmare and I can't wake up. That really stuck with me. Now the world is gone I'm just one oh god help me. Mother. Help me, mother. I'm having a nightmare and I can't wake up. Just thinking of the line gives me chills. The way he says it, the true horror in his voice. Was a book first and Metallica's one is also about Johnny. I read the book in high school. It was a rather difficult read because it's not written like a normal book. It's written like we speak. Punctuation is limited. I watched the movie because of that song. I'm convinced that the all glass shower trend is from a generation of home builders who saw the shower scene in Psycho as kids. Growing up my mother was traumatized of that movie to the point she had trouble taking showers and would only take a bath. One day while home alone she had to shower to rush over somewhere, while in the shower a large picture frame fell and hit the light switch on the way down, crashing to the floor. She said she screamed for a few minutes, sat there panicking, then got up and looked and realized what had happened. To my knowledge she has not taken a shower since and probably never will. I saw Psycho back in middle school, and for years after I would bring my cat into the bathroom with me while I showered. I didn't really expect him to defend me, but I guess I was hoping he could at least warn me that I'm about to murdered. Must have worked too because I wasn't murdered until after he died. When the Wind Blows from 1986 For anyone who doesn't know it, here's a short summary from Wiki. The film accounts a rural English couple's attempt to survive a nearby nuclear attack and maintain a sense of normality in the subsequent fallout and nuclear winter. Just thinking about this movie gives me chills and not in a good way. Probably one of, if not, the most disturbing movies I've ever watched. I felt sick for days. I found this movie because Roger Waters of Pink Floyd did the score. Tough to watch. I watched it and Grave of the Fireflies in the same night and felt hollowed out inside. Good lord, even in the darkest depths of my self-loathing I wouldn't have hurt myself like that. Oof. You're supposed to watch Got F with Tartoro to aid your recovery. Humans aren't meant for those depths. Would the characters following the official UK government advice for what TP do in event of a nuclear war? There was a podcast a while back maybe it was Radio Lab, where they discussed how the recommendations were actually based on research into the survivors of the Japanese bombs, and could have been helpful in real life. The only problem being that nuclear bombs today are an order of magnitude worse than Hiroshima so hiding under a desk wouldn't help much anymore. Grave of the Fireflies. It's the story of every war. Everything about this movie is a true work of art. The story, metaphors with the candy, the brutal, absolutely horrifying ending. Even the poster for the film is traumatic. If you lighten it up, you see that the fireflies aren't actually fireflies but firebombs being dropped by planes in the middle of the night. Even more messed up when you realize it's, sort of, based on a true story. Akiyuki Osaka, the author of the story, has explained that Grave of the Fireflies is parable of his experiences of the firebombing of Cub and WW2 during which his sisters did die. The whole character of Seta is a stand-in for Osaka and the remorse of not taking action sooner that could have saved Setsuko in the movie is Osaka apologizing to his sisters. God I was like 14 and someone told me if I liked AIM to check out Studio Kibli. Saw it at the store and was so excited to watch my first Kibli movie. Edit, took me 7 years to watch another one. Grave of the Fireflies and My Neighbor Tartoro were shown as a double feature when it was in theaters in Japan. I love Tartoro and Fireflies for obviously different reasons. 
I cannot imagine watching those two films anywhere near each other, time-wise. I watched Event Horizon as a 15-year-old who had been left alone for the weekend for the first time at about 11pm on a Saturday night. That was over 20 years ago and I'm still not really over it. I once mentioned Event Horizon to a co-worker offhand and they took that as a recommendation. They didn't talk to me much after that. I imagine a similar situation happened with my mom when she come home telling us about how a co-worker had recommended Soylent Green so we all got together and watched it on Friday movie night. I was in elementary school. Me and my sister watched it. Dudiates SCI Fi Horror. Awesome. I guess we figured it being an older movie it would be cool but not all that scary. Obviously we were wrong, it was disturbing as F-U-C-K both in the violence and just in the messed up existential implications. Heebie-jeebies man. It could have been so much worse. There's a scene in the movie that shows what happened to the original crew. It's maybe 15 seconds long with lots of extreme close-ups that make it hard to tell what's happening. Apparently that was originally supposed to be several minutes long, but ended up being cut for time. Effects supervisor Dave Buywell has described his time shooting the sequence and some of the gruesome details that didn't make it. Deleted shots include a female crew member who had her mouth held open by clamps, while a crazed guy performs amateur dentistry by drilling screws into her teeth. Another unlucky chap has his legs smashed apart by steel bars and crawls away leaving parts of them behind, while another crew member had her breasts torn off. The scene also included more cannibalism and sex, with adult performers being hired to simulate the sexual assaults. Watership Down Fuck yes. When Holly is describing the destruction of the Warren this is an animated movie about rabbits. It'll be great for kids. No. What really stuck with me as a kid was Fiverr seeing his vision of the field filling with blood. That was traumatic. My parents showed me and my siblings when we were little and I was like WTF after. Friends' parents put that on for the kids one Easter without checking it first. There was screaming. My mom took me to watch this at the cinema when I was about seven, thinking it was some cutesy animation about bunnies. She promptly fell asleep and I'm still traumatized from it. Never been able to watch it again. I was traumatized by the ending of The Mist. I had previously read the short story in one of the Stephen King anthologies, I forget which one, so I was not prepared for the ending they went for in the movie. Spoiler, it's not the same. Read somewhere that Stephen King himself wished he would have thought of that ending instead of his own. You probably read that here on Reddit. It's mentioned every single time that the mist is mentioned in one of these threads. Probably the worst part of the ending was the fact there is no music over the credits. Just ambient noise to let you sit there and truly take in what the fuck just happened. I just watched Invasion of the Body Snatchers last night and it does the same thing, it was so perfect. Following a bleak ending, the screen just cuts straight to black and the credits roll with all the fanfare of a group of mourners leaving a funeral. Edit, oh and you can watch it for free on YouTube which is how I saw it. They have been showing a lot of great classic movies on YT for free lately. I recently watched Spaceballs and War Games on there too, they hold up amazingly well. For anyone who has seen it and is wondering, the main character is cornered in a car with four others including his eight-year-old son and four bullets in a revolver, he shoots all of them to spare them from the horrible death of the monsters, and when he steps out to sacrifice himself to the monsters, he is instead greeted by a military tank which saves him after he just killed the others. I think you are underselling the ending lol. It's not just a tank, it's a whole parade the army. They thought the world was over but now it's clear the army is saving everyone. He even sees people that he thought were killed early in the movie be escorted by the army. If you haven't seen it and are wondering, skip this spoiler and watch the movie instead. It's good. Train spotting. Saw it once, and I'll never forget it. The baby. Watched it for the first time just after having my first baby. Not one person warned me, not even my husband who had seen it before traumatized. Kids. I have no legs, I have no legs. I thought this was going to be a cool edgy teen movie to watch when I was 13 or 14. After it was over all I wanted to do was take a shower and go to church. I saw this movie at 15, I was traumatic. As a female though it was good traumatic, I think it kept me out of trouble. I had a lot of friends who kinda acted like the kids in that movie. Recently rewatched it at 41 with my husband who had not seen it. Still disturbing. 
My mom sat my sister and I down in front of the TV, turned this movie on, and said you're not leaving the room till the movie is finished. I was maybe 13. My sister would have been 11. She absolutely intended us to be scared into good behavior. I think it worked, but I also don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. I often remind my mom that the way she raised my sister and I in the IATs would be questionably legal now. Seriously. I saw kids as a kid and I think it scarred me.